Hey guys, in today's English video lesson, we're going to learn some vocabulary with the late Christopher Hitchens and Salman Rushdie. I think one of the things that is very affecting in the book at the beginning is your, is your uh, accounts of your parents. Um, both the commander, as you, you call him, your, your father, um, who you present as a somewhat, you know, as a kind of stoic. This is an adjective that describes someone who does not openly express their feelings and emotions. They don't do it in a visible way. For instance, they may experience something unpleasant and they will just keep it to themselves. Stoicism is a school of thought which has become very popular recently, actually. But not fantastically emotionally articulate person. And, and your mother who hoped for more and was, you know, had a kind of gaiety that she perhaps was not. Gaiety is a manner of liveliness. So there is that contrast between the two parents there. Satisfied by him. And then this tragic yes. um, fate that befell her. I don't know whether you want to... Let's pay attention to the word befell, which is the simple past form of befall. When a tragedy or an unpleasant event befalls an individual, it happens to them. Talk about that a bit. Well, it's the, the book is to quite a large extent about my, my personality as a divided self. Not just in the political and ideological, but in every respect. And it begins by having radically discrepant parents, my father. He had radically discrepant parents. There was not much ag agreement between the two of them. Discrepant is an adjective. Discrepancy is the noun, and it refers to a large, a big difference. Radically discrepant. Uh, maybe there was a lot of conflict between them. He was 12 years older than my mother, had given his entire life to the Royal Navy, and been a very disciplined and very hardy warrior in it and at the end of the a hardy warrior resilient someone who doesn't give up easily and sometimes we use the word hardy to talk about plants or animals that are resilient plants that last all the way through winter could be described as hardy hardy warrior a resilient fighter the war had been rather let go by the navy they downsized and sort of dumped him on the beach and he never forgot it never got over it and i was brought up guessing a formulation which I've only put into words in this book, which is a family of people who were Tories but with nothing to be Tory about. They had nothing to be Tory about. Tory refers to a conservative political party. So <laughs> this is a play on words. They had nothing to be Tory about. They were not conservative at all, is what he is implying. Their loyalty to the establishment of the crown, the empire, and the admiralty and so on had been set at a very low price. Admiralty. This is the department that is in charge of naval affairs. Admiralty. Let's hear that word again. On the beach, and he never forgot it, never got over it. And I was brought up guessing a formulation which I've only put into words in this book, which is a family of people who were Tories but with nothing to be Tory about. Their loyalty to the establishment of the crown, the empire, and the admiralty and so on had been set at a very low price. And he never quite recovered from this. And he was from a very doer, Baptist, Calvinist background in Portsmouth Dockyards. I'm dockyards. Dockyards is a place where ships are built and repaired. Let's pronounce together dockyards. Dock with a longer vowel sound. So we have dock, not duck, dock, dockyards. When I was young once, I must be about eight, he liked to have breakfast alone in the morning. He was an early riser. He messed around in the kitchen in solitude. Baked eggs, I remember he liked, and strong tea. And, so and I thought, I'm not an early riser at all, but I thought, perhaps it'd be nice to go down and have breakfast with the old man one of these days. So one morning, I put on my jammies, totted down the stairs. Toddle down the stairs, toddle. And this is to walk unsteadily, just like babies do. I toddled, I toddled down the stairs. I walked unsteadily, went downstairs. Into the kitchen, Good morning, Daddy. He looked up at me and said, bloody hell, it'll be family prayers next. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, okay, you don't have to tell me twice. <laughs> well, well, and I don't particularly like breakfast anyway, so while this was happening, Yvonne would have been upstairs with her makeup and trying to put on a fashionable look for the day. She was very beautiful, she was a milliner, she wanted to make a success of a dress shop, he never managed it, alas. But, um, and she wanted a life that, where we went to the theater and to shop cocktail parties and things of this kind, and there was no money for this sort of thing, and he, he bought her. So I could tell that this was a very radically oppositional family to be from. And, well, um, she left him, waiting too long, as respectable women did in those days, especially in the English lower middle class, waiting too long, waiting until my brother and I were off the scene. She took up with a man who wasn't boring, who was witty and playful and uh, literate. And was an unfrocked or... And I was a uh, spoiled, unfrocked priest, priest of the Church of England. Unfrocked, unfrocked. Pay attention to that sound at the end. So an unfrocked priest is a priest who has no longer the title of being priest. Maybe something has... Uh, made this person leave this job. It could be a scandal, or perhaps they have been removed uh, from that title due to a particular set of circumstances. Unfrocked, unfrocked. So this was an unfrocked priest. And a recent convert to the 
toilsome uh, jabberings of the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. Yes. <laughs> he uses the word jabbering to talk about nonsensical words. So uh, it sounds like he had disdain. Disdain. He uh, looked down on this gentleman, Maharishi Yogi. Uh, let's hear that word again. Jabberings. Jabberings. And a recent convert to the toilsome uh, jabberings of Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. Yes. His sail was so raised as to be ballooned by any wind of bullshit that came by. Um, Thank you so 